Hey, I'm Brandon McCatherine. These are the first three submissions that everybody needs to learn in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If you stay to the end of the video, I got a fourth submission for you. The first submission everybody learns and the last one that anybody masters. So the first submission that you're gonna learn is the rear naked choke. Probably the most important submission in all of grappling. This is the signature move of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And as a beginner, this is the mistake, probably the biggest mistake that I see people make, that they're too low with their chest on the back. When I'm on the back and I'm trying to put this seat belt position, that's what we call this with one overhook and one underhook, a seat belt. When I have this seat belt position, I need to be ear to ear with him. When you're learning the rear naked choke, if you try to lace it up while he's up high like this, you're, you, listen, you can make people tap if they're just sitting here. You're not gonna be able to pull this off. You're not in a good squeezing position. Your elbows are too high. You don't, you can't be strong up here. You need your elbows down here so you can squeeze together and squeeze down, push your chest in. So this is the little change that I want you to make when you're practicing. Just move your hip back about three inches and then pull his shoulders down into that pocket. And now you'll see your ear lands right beside his ear. I want you to go deep like you're throwing a left hook with your whole body. Deep. And then the same thing with this hand. This hand slides palm facing you behind his ear. And now my first movement is to go down with my elbow. So I'm going down. Then my elbows go together. And then I might think about squeezing him from here, using my head to reinforce. And I, you can, man, you can see, I, I don't really even get to the point where I need to squeeze him when, I, when I'm doing this in practice, you know. Take the back, put the hooks in, and move back just a little bit. Drop him into that pocket until he's sitting right there on your ear. Now big left hook until your elbow goes under the chin. Now big right hook until your hand goes behind the head, okay? I'm touching the shoulder on each side. Notice too that my elbow, when I come back this way, see how my elbow's under the chin here? When I come back this way, I don't let the elbow slip off to the side over towards his ear. I keep that elbow under his chin. So I wanna go deep until I got the elbow and then back across, but I don't move the elbow back in. Now the elbows go together and the squeeze is down. And then I'll think about flexing my bicep just a little, reinforcing with my head, and I'll get a tap with really no pressure at all. And that's how you should practice it with your partner. Nice and slow. It's not gonna go like that always in the training room and in competition. Guy's gonna duck his chin and get his hands involved and you're gonna have to learn to do some hand fights. All right, probably the second most important submission, the arm lock, just a straight arm bar. What we're gonna work on here is again, just mastering the finishing mechanics of the lock and easy entries, nothing too crazy. So in this particular situation, I've got the mount and I got a low mount and I feel that he puts his hands on my chest and he wants to bench press me. Oh, look, I go limp around him right there. As he pushes up on me, I go, my shoulder sag. So I make him do all the work and my left hand's now gonna transfer over to this side. So my hands are gonna go here. And to do the drill, I just want you to put your hand, your weight on your hands. As you do that, your weight is gonna shift to here. And now I want you to lean this way to lighten this leg. And that'll free this leg up to come around. The heels are gonna curl towards the butt. I'm controlling the wrist with my elbow and I have a straight, strong posture already so that I'm pulling him into the arm lock. This should be, if I keep this stuck to my chest the whole time and keep it tight, he'll probably tap before my back gets to the floor, right? But I'm gonna loosen that up a little bit, give him some space just so we can talk about the actual finishing mechanics on the arm lock. The big controversy, do the feet cross or not? Yes and no. I would say, while you're learning the basic mechanics of it, don't cross the feet. You can't, I mean, listen, there's definitely utility to cross the feet and I do this all the time. But while we're learning the mechanics, while you're new, just keep the heels curled in tight and the toe on the floor right there. The knee should pinch. The reason that the knees pinch is because it lifts the fulcrum. My hip is the fulcrum. Right here where his arm is, look, I can pull down. Obviously don't pull straight across the goodie bag, kids. You know what I'm saying? Go off to the side, but pulling down and lifting up, that's, listen, that's tight. But when I pinch my knees, you see how it lifts his elbow up higher. And now the fulcrum is even higher and it's gonna take less pressure. I'm gonna have more opportunity and leverage to pull through here. 
the heels come in, the knees go together. And I'm not like trying to kill him with my squeeze. I'm just keeping a firm grip there. And then if you already have the hand on your chest, you've probably got the tap. But if you don't have the hand on your chest, you're just now pulling it back. The weight is here, not here. I need to be on the end of the lever, not the fingers necessarily. He could turn, can rotate his wrist this way. So that is the end of the lever, but there's too many joints involved. So come in here, get his wrist and his hand at the same time, and then just reinforce your own hand. That's the perfect spot. I want the thumb for this particular arm lock that you're learning, I want the thumb facing the ceiling and the hips facing the ceiling. If his thumb were to rotate here, I would need to bring my pressure across this way. So I would pull across and in with the hip. If his thumb rotated the other way, now I need to bring my pressure across this line. So this knee would go in. third submission that I think everybody needs to know, and to me, this is the most important submission in my game still to this day. This is the triangle choke. I want to show you just a, like the most basic possible triangle example, and then we're going to talk about a couple of the problems that people usually run into. In this case, we're going to start from the butterfly guard. I'm going to have the overhook over here on my left side. Now, you'll notice when I'm playing the butterfly guard that I'm not sitting in here square with him so that he can push me. His pressure would push me to my back here. But when my hip is opened out to the side and he begins to make that same pressure forward, now I fall to my side. And that gives me an opportunity to reach over and try to collect his base. I'm up on this butterfly guard. I get control of this hand maybe, or maybe just this elbow. As he pushes forward, I try to tap his elbow and then he bases out with his hand to stop the sweep. Perfect. I wanna go thumb up, palm up with my grip here. And then my next play is to get this foot, the bottom leg into his hip so he can't come forward and change the gap between our hips anymore. Now my left foot is free. I can start to bring it high. And as I pull my head away right here, I'm gonna pull my knee through this hole. Right. Don't focus on trying to take your foot out or throw his arm out of the way. That's gonna be hard to do. Come off to this angle. Just pull your knee towards your face. Your foot should be free. And now whip that bad boy around. Okay. Once I get to this spot on the triangle, what happens next is really dependent on what happens with this arm here. If he leaves this arm on this side, then what I like to do is to hit this angle here. We call that a reverse triangle, okay? I don't really use this to submit. I use it to attack this arm. But any kind of attack on this arm, as he starts to straighten it, I can now pull that across. And when the arm is over on this side, that little angle shift and change gives me a really deep triangle right there. Okay. And to me, this is the most powerful position, the most powerful submission that there is. I mean, I got both of my legs wrapped up around your neck, dude. Like, what are you gonna do? If he goes to, uh, I'll be kind of light with it, but can you start to lift me from here? I can stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, ramp, like you're gonna go rampage. If he starts to get you off the ground in a triangle ever, dude, bail. Do not get picked up off the ground with a triangle. He went to, like rampage went to lift him and he was pulling down and he was straight on like this. And if Matt is gonna be powerful, it's gonna be straight in front of him. All his power is lined up right here. He's starting to go to lift now. Oh man, he's gonna get me off the ground. I'm gonna be in big trouble. But. If I have any kind of angle cut, even with this loose triangle like this, go to lift. Dude, it's so hard for him to lift. It really doesn't take any effort for me because his spine is all misaligned. He's carrying all my weight off to one side. So it makes your triangle easy to do and stops you from getting dropped on your head. Bonus submission, and this is the first submission that I ever learned. Shout out to Lonnie Jones. He talked to me before I ever started Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> so this is an Americana. The thing with the Americana, while you're a white belt, this is like the first move that you do, and especially if you're a big guy, it's like kind of the only move you do for a while. But then as you get to kind of the blue, and especially like past blue, it's hard to make good people tap with the Americana. 
and it feels like you never get somebody in a position to even try it on. So the reason that the Americana is the last move that you master is because position is the last piece of jujitsu that really locks in for you, being able to hold position and surf and be efficient. So that's what's required to pull off an Americana. Like there are no Americanas ever caught in a scramble. The guy has to be pinned, he has to be controlled, and his arm has to be isolated. The other thing, and we'll talk about finishing mechanics now, why do people have trouble finishing? Here's a basic little setup you might see. Arm comes around to push on my face. I trap it with the bottom hand first, little cup here. And then I come in, and cuff it there, hand goes underneath. I got both of my hands now out here on his wrist. It's a wrist lock, not an arm lock, you know what I'm saying? I'm here. And now watch this movement with the, somebody, in the beginning, some guys try to finish it like this. You see that all the time. He's more likely to tap me in here somewhere than I am to get a tap off of him. Circle your elbow off. And if you're a gentleman, then give him a little space and put your elbow in. The thing is, if you give him a little space like that as you come off, he's gonna straighten his arm. Yes, and you're gonna lose the Americana. Instead, I want you to open your elbow just enough to let his head hit the dirt. And now I want you to scrape your elbow across his face and drop the elbow into this pocket right beside his neck. And then I want you to pull everything tight to you here. So everything is in close. Look how I got this big curl on both of my wrists here. No thumbs involved in this lock because I want my hands curled. My next movement is to pull his elbow down here to his hip. All right, so yeah, you, you okay here? Mm -hmm. He's got tight shoulders, it's gonna suck. I never, look, the paintbrush, I'm gonna loosen it up for you. The paintbrush has to happen because I got him up here. And you're like trying to lift the elbow, but look how this takes all the torque off of it. The finish is down here. And then it's a pull the elbow to the hip. I don't lift the, I literally lift the hand none whatsoever. Or scrape with the hand. That's, that's fine. But look how much play he's got right there. He has no play right here. All I do is pull it to him and he's ready to tap. That's how you finish an Americana. Sheesh. <laughs> what do you think are the first three submissions that every jujitsu player should learn? Let me know in the comments. So that's it for this video. Like, subscribe. Check these two out.